All right, happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to Survive to Thrive. Today, we're going to be focusing on finding the motivated. I have three key points. Please write these down. Number one, stop doing what doesn't work. Number two, figure out what works. And number three, ramp it up. So let's start with stop doing what doesn't work. Remember, I'm going to give this to you in an outline form. I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to tell you what I want you to write down. Please don't write down every word I say. I'll let you know what I want you to write down. All right, let's start with we can evade reality, but we cannot evade the consequences of reality. Write it down. Just because you ignore it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. One of the things that Andy Andrews teaches in The Traveler's Gift is there are seven principles that guide our lives. And those principles are guiding our lives whether or not we acknowledge them or not. The principle of gravity has always been in effect. It didn't show up when the apple fell on Newton's head. We've always had the principle of gravity. Now, you can ignore it walk off the edge of a cliff and unfortunately you're going to you're going to pay the consequence of ignoring reality so i'm going to say it again we can evade reality but we cannot evade the consequences of evading reality there are a lot of real estate agents especially homeowners and buyers as well but there are a lot of people right now who are just ignoring reality. Now, there's a really good article that went out. I'll put it on our Survive to Thrive page so you can read it, but it talks about housing inventory and it shares, for those of you in Florida and Texas, it shares that Florida and Texas are leading the way for increased inventory. Pay attention. You can ignore that. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Now, if you ignore it, you're going to pay the consequences of ignoring reality. All right, next point, write this down. Stop doing what doesn't work. Write it down, write it down, write it down. Stop doing what doesn't work. Here's a question that you should be asking yourself. What am I doing or spending money on that is no longer effective? What am I doing or spending money on that is no longer effective? Now. In order to do this exercise, I, I want you to write down your top 10 sources of lead generation, the top 10 sources for your seller listings and buyer deals. By the way, if you don't have 10, that's okay, but write a list up to 10. Next thing I want you to do is I want you to rank them in order. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then I want you to eliminate The bottom five. You can adjust those numbers if you don't have 10 sources. Let's say you have six. I want you to still rank them, but I want you to look at what's working, what's not, and eliminate what's not working. By eliminating what's not working, you're not going to do less business because you're going to want to hang on to this, right? Even if you got one deal from this, you know, you, you've got this magazine. I'm just picking that out of the air, by the way. So for those of you who are using magazines, I'm not picking on you. Maybe that's a great source. But you've got this magazine and you closed one sale in the last year, so you don't want to let it go. By letting go of the things that aren't working, what you're doing is you're giving yourself more time to spend on the things that are working. So don't look at this as I'm giving up business. You're actually creating more business because you're giving yourself more time to spend on the 20% of lead generation that actually works. All right, second bullet point for you is figure out what works. Move from having success to creating success. Write it down. In order to survive to thrive, I must move from having success to creating success. Would all of you agree that when the market's doing really, really well, there's a lot of real estate agents who are having success? 
they're succeeding not only because of the things that they're doing right, but they're succeeding in spite of the things that they're doing wrong. You have to move from having success to creating success. Having sales happen is one thing, but now we need to make sales happen. Having sales happen is one thing, but now we must move to making sales happen. Anyone who doesn't move to mastering lead generation usually gets shifted right out of the business. Hmm. Too harsh? You know, I'd rather be harsh and help you make changes that are going to get you to the destination that you want to arrive at than love on you and love you right out of the business. Because a lot of real estate coaches are doing that. A lot of leaders are doing that. And I'd rather not do that. I'd, you know, I'd rather you maybe get upset with me from time to time. I'm okay with that. As long as whatever I'm saying, whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm, whatever I'm doing as a leader causes you to break through those obstacles and reach your goals. Now, there's a message and a message here. And if you read pages 57 through 71, you're going to read about the message and the method. And I'm going to talk to you more about this another day. This is an entirely uh, a full session of Survive to Thrive. I can't just bury it into this conversation because there's not enough time to do that. But I want to just give you one example of what I'm talking about. So when the market shifts, your message changes. So one of the things that I would offer in today's market is just an example. A guaranteed sale is an example. All right. If your home doesn't sell within 90 days, we'll buy it up to 90% of the market value minus fees and closing costs. Right. That's a message that's going to work in today's market because there's a lot of homes that aren't selling. Now, if you use that same message in 2021, who cares? Everything sells. Guaranteed sale? What is that? My home's going to sell anyways. I don't need the guaranteed sale. So the message has to, has to match the market. And we're going to have another day where we go really deep on the message and the method, but that's not for today. All right. Last major point is ramp it up. All right, here we go. An inconsistent approach can get you leads. Huh. An inconsistent approach can get you leads. But it won't give you anywhere near the number of leads you'll need when the market shifts. So when you hear when the market shifts, I just want you to understand, depending on where you live, and there's few exceptions to this, Depending on where you live, that whole when the market shifts, that's in your rear view mirror. It's already shifted. It won't give you anywhere near the number of leads you'll need when the market shifts. You're going to need a lot of leads. And that means you're going to have to do a lot of lead generation. You must do it every day. Make sure you heard that. Make sure you write it down, write it down, write it down. You cannot have an inconsistent approach to lead generation in this market. It won't work. You need more leads. And in order to get more leads, you're going to have to be more consistent in your lead generation. You have to do it every single day. You must do it several hours every day. All right, notice it didn't say an hour a day or two hours a day, it said several hours a day. Now, what does that mean to you? I'll tell you what it means to me. It means I need to have standards. It means I need to have standards for how many people I'm gonna speak to every single day. How many real estate conversations am I gonna have? So even if I'm not, prospecting for selling owners and expires and don't hear me say that's not a you shouldn't do that because you absolutely should but even if i'm not i'm still having real estate conversations that include hey by the way who do you know that might be thinking of selling their home in the next six months 
Who do you know that might be looking to buy or sell in the next six months? Hey, just out of curiosity, who do you know that I should know? You want to build your database? Talk to your sphere of influence and your past clients and ask them, who do you know that I should know? Don't be surprised when they start giving you names. It's called being a connector. If you read The Seven Levels of Communication by Michael Mayer, he's a master at this. Read that book and just follow the blueprint. You must do it every workday for the rest of your career. To do this, you must subscribe to one simple belief. Get it ready. Here it comes. To do this, you must subscribe to one simple belief. Dealing with business, never. I want you to underline it and highlight it. Dealing with business never takes precedence over finding business. So if you remember the story that I shared with you from 10X is easier than 2X, the question is, will it make the boat go faster? And, and that came from the rowing team from the UK who was competing in the Olympics and their goal, their goal was to win the gold medal. Now, UK hadn't won, not only had they not won a gold medal, they hadn't won a medal in like 50 years. And they said, we're gonna win the gold medal. Here's how they did it. They had one question. And the question was, will it make the boat go faster? Now, every decision they made from that point forward, every single decision, they asked themselves, will it make the boat go faster? And if the answer was no, it won't, then they didn't do it. So I want you to hear this again and listen for, will it make the boat go faster? Dealing with business never takes precedence over finding business. Finding business makes the boat go faster. Everything else doesn't matter until you've achieved that. That means if you have offers on listings, you have repair requests that you need to negotiate, you have agents that are calling you up with questions. All of that has to get done. But all of that can wait until you hit your lead generation goals for the day. Because finding new business is always, always, always at the top of the food chain. You must adopt the position that until your lead generation is done every day, nothing else should get done. Until your number one priority is done, everything else is a distraction. The number one challenge you face won't be, never mind. The number one challenge you face will be consistently doing lead generation activities over time. It is the one true challenge all real estate agents face and the number one stumbling block that knocks most out of the game. Not getting lead generation done in, day in, and day out may suffice in a hot market, but it will put you out of business in a cold market. How much time should you block for lead generation? Here's my answer, as much time as it takes. If it takes four hours, then it's four hours. If it takes six hours, it's six. If it's eight, it's eight. There's nothing that mat matters until you've hit those lead generation standards. Talk to me, Darren. You're on mute, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think about how to word this. Um, what about a listing appointment or an appointment with somebody for agent attraction if it's during your prospecting hours? Because I've I've prioritized those meetings above my prospecting time because I'm like, you know, this is more important, but maybe it's not. So when you time block your calendar, you're gonna time block yeah. your generation, right, Darren? So yep. say that you have lead generation blocked from, let's say, 10 to, 10 to 2 every day, right? When yep. somebody says, hey, I want to list my home, who's in charge of what time that appointment gets scheduled for, Darren? Right. Okay. Here's yeah. the answer. Yeah, you are. Thank you. So I'm available 
between blank and blank. How about 10 a.m.? Nope, I'm already booked. How about 11? Yeah, I'm booked there too. How about noon? Yeah, I got that book too. <laughs> awesome. All right, that's a wrap. I want to hear from you. What are your ahas? What are you going to implement today? What, what are you going to do different? Remember, in order to get to better, you have to get to different. If you show up here every day for entertainment value, you are wasting your time. I am not that entertaining. Gee whiz, just ask my wife. She'll tell you. If you're coming here in order to get one thing that you are going to implement in your business every single day, then you're on track. You're here for the right reason. What did you hear that's going to change the way you do things today? I'm going to ramp up what works. What works? Say it again. I'm going to ramp up what works. You go, girl, Vivian. I'm so proud of you, 100%. And what I want you to do is I want you to define that um, off the call. I want you to sit down with your journal. I want you to spend some time doing the exercises that I shared on today's call. And I want you to describe what does it mean to ramp up what works. And that's what you're going to implement. Who's next? I think I'm going to check my time. Okay, Noah first. I was going to say um, it was really powerful for me to hear that new business is always the most important thing. Right. Uh, as a new agent, even, I'm starting to gain momentum uh, working on deals and now starting to get busy with the day-to-day -day tasks and the business that is in front of me, in front of my plate. Um, but continuing to focus on new business zealously is is kind of going to really hit home with me and, and make sure that I always lock in on that as the top priority. Proud of you, Noah. There you go, buddy. And I'm going to tell you, you all will reach a point where you're going to be very tempted to take your foot off the gas. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. I remember my wife coming into my office and asking me, would you start taking listings? How many listings do we need? Like as many as it takes. With 70 listings at the time. Because that's what it took. Somebody else was in there with Noah, please. It was me. It was Jacqueline. Um, Talk to me. So what I was going to say was what was huge to me is my perspective and mindset around lead generation feels very different from you saying to set a standard because instead of thinking about, oh, I need to make calls for three, two to three hours, I'm going to be laser focused on and have it on the wall. This is the standard of the day. And Hey, if I get it done in an hour, I'm free in an hour. Right. right. So for me, it's more motivate, more motivating to do lead generation saying like, Hey, I might make three calls and hit the standard. I might make 12 or I might make 15, but I might not have to spend three hours, but I'm going to do it until it gets done. Um, so I think, it's, uh, but just my perspective and motivation is totally different. Love that. Thank you for sharing that, Jacqueline. I promise you somebody else here needed to hear that, okay? And that's 100% it. When you, when you hit your daily standards, you win the day. That's all it takes. Put enough yeah. of those together and you won the week. All right, that's a wrap. Unless there's anybody out there that had something they wanted to say, please jump in here. Uh, pausing, giving you a moment. And if not, go out and crush it. Time to get to work. And I will see everybody tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Sean. Right. Thanks, Sean.